Welcome, my name is Andreas Baumbach. We're here at EuroPCR 2015 and I'm with the panel of the great debate that was held yesterday on the topic of dual antiplatelet treatment. My panel members here are Martin Gillard from Brest in France, Stefan James from Uppsala in Sweden and Tony Gerschlich from Leicester in the United Kingdom. We had a long discussion yesterday about the relevance of dual antiplatelet treatment for our clinical practice and we had a case-based approach to the discussion with the audience and amongst ourselves. Tony, we started with a stable patient. Did we reach a consensus? Did we reach a take-home message uh, in the first discussion? I think we did, Andreas. I think uh, prior to the recent guidelines, uh, it was felt that all patients, irrespective of presentation type, should get 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy. But the recent guidelines, which looked at a whole host of data, had come up with consensus that for a stable patient, relatively straightforward lesions, but certainly a stable patient, should get, need required only six months of dual antiplatelet therapy. Was there any role uh, for three months or a prolongation towards 30 months, like the DUPT trial suggests, yeah. or even longer? Well, I think we felt that, um, there, that there may be particular scenarios where you may select either a shorter length of dual antiplatelet therapy or indeed longer. And the shorter may be, for example, somebody who needed biopsies or some sort of procedures on a regular basis where you wanted to reduce the bleeding risk. Or maybe somebody, we talked about a sports person who may uh, be at risk of injury, cyclist or something like that, where we thought that we could reduce perhaps to three months. But there are certainly data out there with certain types of drug eluting stents which seem to have more data for, for three months. So if you're going to reduce it to three months, I think you may have to select your drug eluting stent. As far as the DAP trial and the prolongation to 30 months, I think we also felt that the, if the ischemic risk was high, so that may uh, lead to longer term risk of stent thrombosis, then in selected patients we may indeed consider 30 months. But we're in a period of transition. I think that, that became very clear in the discussion also with the audience that it is not common practice to go very short or very long yet. Uh, Martin, we discussed extensively uh, the use of dual antiplatelet treatment in acute coronary syndromes and came to different but pretty clear solutions there. Yes, and for this uh, patient who have an acute coronary syndrome, there is also a consensus after the great debate. It was one year. Not because in this case we think that it is a patient and not the stance. So uh, we uh, recognize more one year than a shorter uh, duration. And the second point, very important, is that we use a new antiplatelet agent, ticagrelor, prasugrel, in this setting, more than the uh, oldest one, clopidogrel. So it's a very real consensus. Yeah, I think <coughs> in, in the interaction with, uh, with our colleagues uh, in the room, we realized that not all have access to all the new P2Y12 inhibitors, but generally it was felt that these should be the, the, the drug of choice. I think that was the consensus. Finally, we, we had a, a difficult scenario which we encounter every day almost now uh, in, the, in the cath lab, and that is a patient that requires anticoagulation and dual antiplatelet treatment. What, what was our discussion there, Stefan? Thanks, Andreas. Yeah, that's, so that is an area in which we were not able to come to a clear conclusion or an agreement among the panelists. The reason for that is that this is an area with, with a lot of uncertainties, a lot of unknowns, and really lack of evidence. So we can't re really base our opinion on solid evidence with respect to triple therapy. In patients with a clear indication for anticoagulation, high risk of, of stroke, or uh, uh, thromboembolic complications, it's important to make sure that the patients stay on anticoagulation to prevent risk of serious events. Mm -hmm. It's also, on the other hand, important to make them stay on antiplatelet therapy to reduce the risk of stent thrombosis in the first place and on the long term, maybe secondary uh, repeated events. Uh, but what types of combination we should use for how long is really difficult at the moment. 
Yeah. We did sort of come to a consensus that we would try to gauge the bleeding risk and the ischemic risk. And clearly, I think we discussed about the role of the DOAX and maybe using those instead of warfarin, the coumadins, in these patients because they've been shown to have less bleeding outside these uh, totals of, of studies. And perhaps a higher bleeding risk having a shorter combination of the DOAX, the aspirin and the clopidogrel, whereas the higher ischemic risk having perhaps prolonged. So it may be the scenario where we may consider, as, recomm as in the recommendations, yeah, to I use uh, bleeding scores to try and I form agree, this. I because triple therapy has proven to be uh, coupled to a lot of bleeding complications. Yeah. So we need to be aware of that risk and to, to limit the duration of triple therapy as much as possible to reduce that risk of bleeding. To go from triple to dual and uh, maybe include NOAX. I think that was a mini consensus, but we couldn't agree on the, on the final uh, makeup of the three and uh, even how long for triple and, and when to go on dual. I think that's work in progress uh, and uh, what became very clear is that this is a very, very important field. Uh, it is a field that is important for us every day and when it comes to what initially looked like something confusing like the length of dual antiplatelet treatment after drug eluting stenting, we had a very simple consensus and the same for acute coronary syndrome. So I think the great debate clarified a lot uh, in the interaction with uh, the colleagues out there. We saw that the practice is actually pretty uniform and there's a clear recommendation on what to do. Where we have a bit of an open field uh, in the details of what to do is with uh, patients on anticoagulation with triple therapy. That, I think, summarizes uh, the, the great debate uh, that we had yesterday and uh, we do feel this was an important session and we do feel that we had a very good dialogue and came to some very important conclusion and certainly answered uh, a lot of questions for me, for us and for the audience. Thank you very much.